Welcome to Aging Insights. I'm Melissa Chalker, Deputy Director of the New Jersey Foundation for Aging. The Foundation's mission is to enable seniors to live with independence and dignity in their communities. Aging Insights is produced by the New Jersey Foundation for Aging to provide information and resources to boomers, seniors, and caregivers. Talking about our end-of-life wishes is not something most of us want to discuss. However, it is one of the most important conversations of your life, as our guest today will tell us. We are joined by Deborah Levine, Director of Community Health at New Jersey Healthcare Quality Institute, and Ted Taylor, Director of the Department of Pastoral Care and Training at Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital in Hamilton. They're here today to talk to us about some projects that help communities talk about wellness, including end-of-life planning, and why it's important to have that conversation and even to put your wishes in writing. Welcome to both of you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join me today. Deborah, I would like to start with you. If you could explain to everyone a little bit about your organization, because people might not know what the Healthcare uh, Institute, uh, Quality Institute is. So if you could just explain um, that briefly Absolutely. for us. Absolutely, and thank you for having us here today. Uh, the New Jersey Healthcare Quality Institute is a nonprofit, nonpartisan, multi-stakeholder advocate for healthcare quality in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. We run a variety of state-level health policy projects, um, mm -hmm. but the project I run day to day is our grassroots community level programming through a program called the Mayor's Wellness Campaign. Yeah, and that's um, you know one of the main things we want to talk to you about today because it relates to the, the topic that we're going to eventually get to. Um, and so tell us a little bit more about the Mayor's Wellness Campaign and what it is and, and what else it might I encompass. Sure, so the Mayor's Wellness Campaign, as I mentioned, is our grassroots community level programming. Uh, our office works with just about 400 mayors across the state, so about 70% of the mayors in the towns in New mm -hmm. Jersey, mm -hmm. to try to identify and meet their local health goals through no to low cost creative programming. Mm -hmm. As you can imagine, the health goals in North Jersey are very different from the health goals in South Jersey. Sure. So we really try to customize our approach by working with each individual mayor and his or her champions mm -hmm. on the ground by providing them with tools and resources and technical assistance to meet their goals. Um, our office just launched a brand new tools and resources part of our website, which I'd encourage viewers to check out. Absolutely. There are about 30 evidence-based step-by-step program ideas. Uh, and so we're going to talk today about this um, conversation of your life and, and how that fits into the Mayor's Wellness Campaign. Could you give us some ideas of some of the other things some of the mayors have focused on? Sure. So um, there are a number of you know health and wellness priorities across New Jersey, again, mm -hmm. depending on where the town is, mm -hmm. socioeconomic status, geography, jobs available, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Um, some towns are focusing on uh, combating uh, rising obesity rates. Mm -hmm. um, other towns are focusing on um, improving education around mental health and mental health first aid. Mm -hmm. um, others, through our Conversation of Your Life programming, are focused on uh, encouraging New Jersey adults to discuss their end-of-life wishes right. in fun, creative community events, part of the Mayor's Wellness Campaign. Right. I think it's a really great idea, and I love the description of the Mayor's Wellness Campaign as a grassroots community thing, because you really are um, working with the mayor and their mm -hmm. staff on what their community needs and tailoring programs to that. So uh, I think that's great, and so I'm so happy that you're here today to talk to us in particular about Conversation of Your Life, which is one of the tools that's available to mayors to talk to their community about. So could mm -hmm. you explain a little bit about how that came became part of the Mayor's Wellness Campaign and, and what it really is yeah. <laughs> for folks? Yeah, so Conversation mm -hmm. of Your Life um, is uh, has been part of the Mayor's Wellness Campaign for about four years now. Mm -hmm. A few years ago, the Quality Institute um, did research in partnership with the Rutgers Eagleton Center for Public Interest Polling, mm -hmm. and we spoke to a number of our members and community partners around New Jersey to mm -hmm. Um, talk about uh, New Jerseyans' attitudes towards end-of-life care. Mm -hmm. And what we found uh, through an early poll with Rutgers was that about 60% of New Jersey adult uh, respondents said uh, they're comfortable talking about their end-of-life wishes. They'd be happy to do that, whether mm -hmm. at a wellness visit or at the dinner table. Mm -hmm. But the same number had never done that before. Wow. So we saw a really important uh, opening for programming mm -hmm. and knew this had to happen at the grassroots mm -hmm. level. And we wanted to work with mayors who we see as uh, champions of change to really uh, drive change at the at the ground level. Sure. So uh, we started Conversation of Your Life in three pilot towns with the support of the mayors in mm -hmm. those towns mm -hmm. who had just recently uh, lost loved ones and personally knew the, the importance of having, having these conversations. This. Yeah, and your research also, in addition to determining who was willing to talk and had they had the conversation, also found that people didn't really, weren't utilizing the tools that are available mm -hmm. for someone to put their end of life wishes into writing, right? Is so, that correct? Uh, uh, yeah, a higher number than we'd like. Mm -hmm. uh, we're certainly not using a number mm -hmm. of different uh, advanced mm -hmm. directive uh, mm -hmm. tools out there mm -hmm. to document their wishes. Right. 
And based on that, we knew it was important that before focusing on documenting your wishes, it was so important to discuss yes. them. Yeah. yeah. So I know we do want to talk a lot about uh, how to discuss them and why it's important to discuss them, but I think we do need to, at least um, for the viewing audience, give them an idea of what tools are available. So could we kind of go through some of the terminology people might be hearing, um, like advanced directive, which you just mentioned, um, healthcare proxy, a healthcare power of attorney, and a post form. Mm -hmm. um, I know you have a, a document on your website that's available for people to go and get a little bit more information about those, but could you give us a basic description of some of those tools mm -hmm. that are available to people, and then we'll talk about why they should be sure. using Sure, and this document that you're referencing, this is our consumer-facing mm -hmm. conversation of your life trifold. Mm -hmm. It's available in English and Spanish on the Quality Institute's website, Perfect. and we bring to all of our community programs through mm -hmm. Conversation of Your Life, mm -hmm. and I think one of the most useful parts within this trifold is a uh, tricky terms cheat sheet. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. A lot mm -hmm. of people get uh, tripped up on a number of different types of advanced directives out yeah. there. Um, so the term that I just used, advanced directive, just briefly, is a legal document that lets you spell out your decisions mm -hmm. for end of life care. Mm -hmm. And that can take a few different forms, including a living will, which is a legal document that spells out the medical treatments you'd like um, mm -hmm. to keep you alive or the medical treatments you don't want. Mm -hmm. Um, a proxy directive or a durable power of attorney for health care, that's a little more specific and it names a person you'd like to make decisions for you, your health care mm -hmm. proxy if you right. can't speak for yourself. Mm -hmm. And then uh, a five wishes, uh, which is a legal advance directive uh, in 42 states including New Jersey. Mm -hmm. uh, it's sort of my favorite because it's called a living will uh, with a heart and soul. Yeah. It's written in very plain language. Yeah, and I think in a, in a little bit we'll get into a little bit more detail. I'd, I'd like to share with folks the five wishes because it is a really great tool. But I yeah. wanted people to have a basic understanding of what we're talking about when we say there are tools available for them to have this conversation. And in particular, five wishes is a really great way to open the door um, to not just sitting your family down and saying, when I'm ill, right. I don't want this or I do want that. Uh, and it get, as you said, it gives a little bit more heart to mm -hmm. it uh, as well. So, you know, based on uh, the events that you've done around conversation of your life, wh what have you really found as to why people don't want to have this conversation? Sure, so those events can take a few different forms. Mm -hmm. um, all around the state with the support of dedicated volunteers, uh, task force members, just like Ted, um, we're running programming through conversation of your life in eight, mm -hmm. eight counties in New Jersey. Um, and that can be anything from a film screening with a discussion that follows to a panel discussion with a few different types of experts speaking. Mm -hmm to even a card game, um, an mm -hmm. art display. We try to make mm -hmm. this conversation very approachable mm -hmm. in comfortable community settings mm -hmm. like your library or house of worship. Right. Um, once in a while when we're at events, um, attendees will share why they may not have completed mm -hmm. an advanced directive or why they may have been afraid to have this conversation. Mm -hmm. And the reason is, is it makes a lot of sense. It, people are scared. Mm -hmm. Talking about death or end of life wishes is intimidating. The mm -hmm. topic is rather taboo, mm -hmm. sometimes even among doctors. Mm -hmm. um, so it can be really hard to bring this up, even if you'd like to. Sometimes there are even cultural barriers mm -hmm. or your family might just not be willing to talk about that. Well, I talk to families about end of life every day. My conversation with them is to give them a perspective of hope. That conversation of a lifetime is a part of the journey um, and it helps them because a lot of times family look at the destination. End of life can be frightening to people. Conversation of a lifetime helps them to make it beautiful. As, as human beings with uh, emotions, it can be difficult sure. both for us and for our family members to really face that reality that we might not someday be here with them, right? Uh, and then I think as you kind of referenced, the other added layer is the difficulty in understanding the terms and what's available and who do I talk to about putting these things in place. So I think what you're doing through trying to educate people both about getting more comfortable about the topic but also how to utilize the tools and who can help them mm -hmm. with the tools is a really important piece of the, of the campaign. So I think we've touched on it a little bit, but my, my go-to question on this is, is why, should pe why should people be having this conversation and why should they be putting it in writing? It is so important for people to have this conversation, the conversation mm -hmm. of your life, so that their wishes for uh, end of life, uh, you know, we talk about uh, planning for a birth, um, mm -hmm. practicing for, you know, your driver's license, we mm -hmm. talk about car seats, we talk about everything surrounding, mm -hmm. you know, the beginning of life. Mm -hmm. Why not talk about the end of life, too? It's mm -hmm. such an important uh, thing to have planned mm -hmm. um, and it's really important to have your own wishes honored because if you don't talk about your wishes then mm -hmm. your family, your loved ones, your doctors are going to give it their best guess and you might not receive the care that you truly want and when you do speak about your wishes your family members then have that gift of clarity 
Mm -hmm. They don't have to guess. They don't have to argue, which we see too often. Mm -hmm. They know exactly what their loved one wants. That's the goal. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's a, a beautiful goal and, uh, and a program that's really well done. Um, you know, the description you gave previously about how you're drawing people in, whether it's a library or house of worship, it sounds like you're really making it a, a comfortable place and providing some level of something that's fun to draw them mm -hmm. in so it's not just a po big poster that says, come talk about what you, how you want to die, right? Um, so explain a little bit more about the, the reasoning behind making the, the programs that approachable. So we we want to make this kind of programming um, accessible mm -hmm. to the community. It's our goal, and um, working with a task force of advisors in every single county that this is running in, that includes mm -hmm. clergy, um, lawyers, librarians, lay people, medical professionals, uh, elected officials, of course, mayors, mm -hmm. county mm -hmm. surrogates. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that leaders in the community and anyone, lay people included, who are concerned about this as an important topic are able to bring this conversation to the community and we mm -hmm. feel that making it in a this conversation in a comfortable setting someplace mm -hmm. you can imagine yourself having coffee and sitting down and chatting with your neighbor mm -hmm. is the best approach because we'll have a uh, more engaged audience mm -hmm. uh, you won't be you know scared walking into a medical yeah. setting to talk about this yeah. might be even easier to gain the trust of the community in a setting that they're comfortable in mm -hmm. when talking about something that can be intimidating or difficult that's terrific. I really appreciate you sharing that information with you. And I'm also very happy that we have um, one of your community partners with us. That you've described the process of, of how these events work and that there usually is someone there to provide detailed information and participate as part of a panel or something. And, uh, and Ted, you've been uh, that person for, uh, for the Healthcare Quality Institute in terms of helping out at some of these panel discussions and some of the conversation of your right. life events. But um, before we talk a little bit more about that, I thought maybe you could explain a little bit of how your profession, what your profession life is and, and how you got involved in talking about this specific topic. Sure. So I've been at Robert Wood Johnson uh, Hamilton for 11 years now as mm -hmm. the director of pastoral care and mm -hmm. training. So that job is a clinical chaplain's position mm -hmm. where my work is being with people at some crisis times in life mm -hmm. and helping individuals and sometimes their families with some of the decisions that go along with these crisis times mm -hmm. and many times it is end of life. Uh, and I came to that through working in hospice for about mm -hmm. five years. Okay. So, and in both of those roles, I've had the opportunity to learn a lot about bioethics and especially end of life ethics. Mm -hmm. And it's just become a passion of mine to mm -hmm. give people information so they can make wise choices that um, align with their values. Mm -hmm. um, and they might n not align with the values of the uh, healthcare system uh, or the values of some of their family members. and. So there needs to be clarity, mm -hmm. and these are tools mm -hmm. that can uh, give clarity for mm -hmm. people so that their wishes and their values are honored at such mm -hmm. an important time. Yeah, that's uh, terrific and really, um, you know, uh, shows that how passionate you are about this and, and making yeah. sure that people have access to this information. So because you've been part of the conversation of your life um, kind of uh, events, um, what can you describe, how can you describe what people might expect when they arrive in an event? If they've seen the poster, if their town is sure. doing some promotion of it and they arrive, what can they expect to find? Well, I've been part of a couple of events. So mm -hmm. um, we've done two screenings of a documentary mm -hmm. uh, called Being Mortal, based mm -hmm. on uh, the book by Atul Gawande. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, those were um, events held at our wellness center mm -hmm. in Hamilton. Mm -hmm. So again, it was not a hospital setting or a scary place. Mm -hmm. You serve a meal. Mm -hmm. and, and although we were pretty real about saying this is going to be um, uh, an event where we're having these a mm -hmm. discussion and mm -hmm. a conversation mm -hmm. based on watching a film and we in both of those we've done two of those so far in both of those settings uh, we had different um, key constituencies um, represented in the room so physicians social workers um, ethicists nurses um, and and had a wonderful dialogue for about half mm -hmm. an hour that probably mm -hmm. could have gone on for hours <laughs> sure. afterwards uh, for people mm -hmm sharing stories of how things went well mm -hmm. in their family, but sometimes mm -hmm. how things did not go so well mm -hmm. and um, you know how they would want things to be. Mm -hmm. um, I also had the opportunity to sit on one of the panel discussions in uh, Robbins, uh, Robbinsville, mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. when uh, the mayor there invited a group of people uh, th uh, through uh, Conversations of Your Life, and that really was impactful too. Mm -hmm. to, for me, just to even learn all the other resources that I hadn't even known about right. <laughs> um, by being on that panel. Mm -hmm. So, uh, And again, it was um, a, a 
in, in the senior center, mm -hmm. a place where people were familiar and comfortable. Mm -hmm. And again, those conversations just start spilling out. People mm -hmm. want to talk about what's important to them. Yeah, uh, and I think it's really great the way you've described this in terms of the settings. Um, you know, as we've already talked about with Deborah, how important that making the the, com the settings comfortable are, but also the not necessarily that this has to be always a medical discussion or that it has to only be for people who are old, right? Oh, um, no, no, you know, this no, is no. a conversation that people could have at any stage of their life um, because it's about um, preparation and, um, as you said, providing some clarity to those who will be um, by your side at the at the end of your life, right? Right. Well, and, and so I always encourage anyone who's of legal age to consider writing their mm -hmm. advanced directive. Mm -hmm. I mean, we mm -hmm. never know what would happen. Mm -hmm. And any time um, in our lives, we could come to a place where we might not be able to make decisions for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And this is all based on this ability, this core value of us having autonomy mm -hmm. in our lives mm -hmm. and being able to say what is important for us and how we want to be treated mm -hmm. at such mm -hmm. a critical time. Yeah. So having these documents put in place that say, this is what's important to me, having that written down, mm -hmm. but even more important than that, this is the person that knows my values best and can mm -hmm. speak for me. Mm -hmm. So given all the different choices that have to be made, um, this person knows me best right. and can speak on my behalf. Yeah, uh, and I think that's you know really great that it, you know in addition to providing um, a comfort level and people talking about it and understanding why um, that the events also um, provides a level of education for people about the tools available. Sure, and we've, sure. we've got, given a broad overview with Deborah of of those tools, but during the event, is there are there materials provided? Right. Are people walking right. away so, with things that yeah, they can? Yeah, so I usually provide folks with a, a packet mm -hmm. of material mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. that we've provided at the hospital. Okay. Um, so you know people come down to my office and. And, and ask I, I, about filling this out sometimes mm -hmm. before uh, procedures. They're saying, oh, I should have filled this out. So yeah. um, I, I walk them through that and mm -hmm. help them complete these documents. But at these events, um, a packet is, is provided that includes information about uh, the, the living will piece. And usually mm -hmm. we use the five wishes, which is a great document. Mm -hmm. Not only does it then provide people with that proxy, mm -hmm. that person to name, mm -hmm. um, and also explicitly writes out their wishes, but it gives a way to talk with that person that you've named, mm -hmm. uh, or people that you've named, um, in a way that's non-threatening, but yeah. really complete. Yeah. Um, so uh, this is kind of the gold standard for me of having those conversations. <laughs> I, I'm also familiar with yeah, the five yeah, wishes yeah. And, and do think it's a, a terrific tool, but for those watching who might not know uh, and understand what five wishes is, could you give us a little bit more detail about, about how it works? Sure. So it is... In most states in the country, it is a document that can um, act as a legal living will. Mm -hmm. And so the first wish is who do you want to be that person to deem your uh, values? to speak for you on your behalf when you can't speak for right. yourself. Right, and so when we've talked um, with Deborah previously and we talked about an advanced directive, that's kind of writing your wishes out, but when we're talking about assigning someone, that's what we refer to as a proxy. Proxy, right? Right. I just want right. to make sure people proxy. are remembering exactly. what the terms and are. There are several different yeah. terms that kind of say mm -hmm. the same thing, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. healthcare agent, mm -hmm. proxy, um, mm -hmm. all of these are basically the same idea of naming that person who knows you best, mm -hmm. and given all of the range of options, mm -hmm. would do the thing that you would want. And ideally mm -hmm. that you've had this conversation with so that That's, when the time comes and you can't speak for yourself, right. they know what you said right. to them I, and I, what I, you, so or what you put into writing. I mm -hmm. remind people, don't surprise your proxy by naming mm -hmm. them, and then they get a call when the worst has happened, right. and they haven't had that conversation mm -hmm. with right. you. Right. And that's why the rest of the document is so good, mm -hmm. is that it talks through all of that, mm -hmm. and you can have the conversations as it prompts you about what mm -hmm. things are important for you. Mm -hmm. All the way from um, if I am so sick that uh, certain things may or may not happen, that's what I do or don't want certain things, mm -hmm. to if I get so ill that my death is imminent, this is how I want that process to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And even once I die, these are some of the things that are important for me. Right. Those are hard conversations, but they at are. least this document, mm -hmm. um, I think, really does a great job of easing you through the conversation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Yeah. And so people walk away from this event with that understanding of how to utilize some of these tools and with some some of them they can take with them right. and peruse and figure out which one fits best sure. for them. Uh, and then is there follow-up or, or at least some level of, of information given to them about who to call if they have questions or who to call if they want advice? Right. So I always give my contact information mm -hmm. in here. Mm -hmm. um, and then there is also information on different websites, including mm -hmm. Healthcare mm -hmm. Quality Institute, so other places to get more information. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, so it can be confusing. I mean, mm -hmm. there's this document. You also mentioned the Pulse document mm -hmm. that people sometimes get confused about as well. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think even in a, 
a brief event, like one of these conversation events, you can't answer all the questions. So right. having some resources behind it mm -hmm. is always helpful. Yeah, to then be able to follow up and, and figure out in which way you'd like to have the conversation right. and what tool might fit best for you. Right. We've mentioned a couple of them, and I, um, you know, I know there are uh, different legality things, and you mentioned this is um, legal here in New Jersey as mm -hmm. well and in several other states, uh, but the POST form is right. something, while other states do it, this is there is a specific New Jersey form Correct. as yeah. well, right? So, there was so, legislation yeah. that passed to, to recognize this as a form that can be used as well. Right, and I, and I try to explain to people that as much as the living will, the, the five wishes and advanced directive um, becomes valid once you can't speak for yourself. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a legal document mm -hmm. that, that sets all of that out. The POST is actually a physician's order or a mm -hmm. medical order form. Right. So it's a little bit different in that mm -hmm. it's immediately um, operational. Mm -hmm. So And it's based on um, someone who might have a life-limiting disease mm -hmm. or medical fragility mm -hmm. and they want to make sure that if things escalate that their wishes are abided by, mm -hmm. even in the emergency. Mm -hmm. So it's a form that helps uh, an individual, uh, perhaps their family member, and their physician or nurse right. practitioner walk through all of the options mm -hmm. and then do what's right for them. Um, so the conversation's had way ahead of time, right. and if an emergency occurs, we do the right thing. thing. Yeah, and I think that's a great distinction because you know we have thrown different terms around in different um, documents, and so it's it's a great distinction between advanced directives or the five wishes and, and writing a lot of that down to something that is a very medically based and physician ordered mm -hmm. um, form that a doctor would need to sit with you and fill out and, and understand what your wishes sure. are in addition to being able to share that mm -hmm. um, with your family. So I think this is really great to get the word out even more about having this conversation and the importance of it. Um, so I did ask Deborah, but as our uh, you know, kind of wrap up, Ted, you know, like, what, mm. why is it important to you, do you think, that, that people have this conversation? Why do you think people should be talking about it with their family and loved ones? Um, I was talking to Deborah earlier about this. So it's, mm -hmm. it's um, you know, time and again, day by day, I and a lot of my colleagues in healthcare chaplaincy, as well as um, ethicists, have the experience of families um, coming to these crisis events mm -hmm. um, with their loved ones at an end of life, mm -hmm. uh, usually in an ICU, mm -hmm. um, without having thought through all of this. And the crisis becomes even uh, more painful because mm -hmm. there has not been a direction. Mm -hmm. and, and so sometimes days and weeks can go by mm -hmm. with, you, you just see the, the suffering mm -hmm. in that family because there hadn't really been a conversation about what this is supposed to be like. Mm -hmm. And I also see the suffering on the faces of uh, my colleagues uh, mm -hmm. in uh, who were nurses and doctors because we're trying to do the right thing, thing. Mm -hmm. and not quite sure what that's right. going to be and, for and that doing individual. it without direction from that from that person and right then, yeah and in my own family um, it, within the last year I've lost uh, my, my mother and she was very clear which mm -hmm. made her passing much easier mm -hmm. um, that we knew exactly what she wanted she mm -hmm. had told us not only had she written it down mm -hmm. but she was so clear and um, it made that difficult experience um, more sacred mm -hmm. um, more special and um, more um, yeah, more, more special for her in her last hours yeah. and last days. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Um, well, I think that is a, a terrific um, spot to, to end our conversation on. Um, and I just really appreciate both of you sharing this information because you're right. Sometimes, um, whether it's end of life or other things in, in that we have to deal with uh, in our daily lives, we often wait till a crisis to find out information. So any way that we can mm. continue to encourage people to have this conversation, uh, I think is really important. And so I want to tell people that they can go to the Healthcare um, Quality Institute website and learn even more about this project as well as watch a video um, about that explains the project more and really talks about why this is important to have this conversation. So I'm glad that you came to share this information with our viewers today and I really appreciate um, both of your, your time, taking time out of your schedule mm -hmm. for that. Um, and thank all of you for sharing your time with us today. Aging Insights is produced by the New Jersey Foundation for Aging and is made possible by donations to the foundation. To become a sponsor for Aging Insights programs, please go to our website at www.njfoundationforaging.org or call our office at 609-421-0206. Our previous episodes may be viewed on our website. We want to remind you to find out about senior services in your area. Please contact your county office on aging. Their numbers are also on our website or you can call the state hotline at 1-877-222-3737. Thank you for watching this episode of Aging Insights and remember, aging is everyone's business. 
through conversation of your life, we encourage you to take a look through these documents to decide what is right for you. Share your completed documents with loved ones and your health care provider. Keep your completed documents in an accessible location and revisit these documents every few years or whenever your health changes. Conversation of Your Life offers resources and programs throughout the state to help people get the conversation started.